So now this video is going to wrap up what I've been covering in the last videos. Ultimately, the goal when I started out was to take an integrated circuit here. So integrated circuits generally are not intended to power higher power devices. So this isn't high power or anything, but uh, for an integrated circuit, trying to power this uh, motor with this uh, fan blade attached to it directly is not uh, possible. They can't output that much current. What I'm going to do is uh, take the 555 timer here. So it's in a stable mode. And uh, really all it's doing is it's going to turn ultimately the fan on or off without me having to do anything. It's going to do it automatically. And uh, so you can use the output of uh, any integrated circuit basically to do the same thing we're going to do in this video. So we have my uh, switch mode power supply. So it takes an AC alternating current from the house and you can adjust the uh, voltage maximum current and all that that's going to power the uh, big breadboard I have the little alligator clip on the one side there the uh, breadboard power supply 9 volt coming in from the uh, barrel jack and it's outputting 5 volts because that's what i have it set to you could also output 3.3 volts i accidentally had that jumper in the 3.3 volt uh, spot you can see we got positive there and uh that red led wasn't very bright and some other odd stuff was going on so I uh, took a multimeter, measured the uh, breadboard uh, voltage, and saw it was only 3.3. Then I knew that I just uh, had it on the wrong setting right there. So we got the larger breadboard here. I have a relay. So this is ultimately what's going to be switching the motor on and off, but it's going to be controlled by the 555 timer. I'm powering it with the switch mode power supply right there. And uh, so this. Uh, breadboard power supply will not be providing the power for the relay it is going to need a little bit of power though for the uh, input of the relay the output of the 555 timer to the input so ultimately current does kind of flow from one side to the other you're working like positive to negative when you think of conventional current so ultimately whether it comes from this side or that side needs to come back to uh, one spot right there so that it can return to the source that uh, sent it. So hopefully that makes sense. That's why we have the two negative supplies connected directly together. Whereas the positives we're keeping separate so that they're providing power separately. And so I'm just gonna take the uh, yellow jumper, that's our input. So we get our signal for the relay. And now you can see that when the output is high, then the relay triggers because I have it set to trigger when the output is high right there. I could set it to trigger when the uh, input I should say is low instead of output so we got one output there input there this is the normally open side of the uh, relay switch on the inside and so it's open it's off until you get that uh, signal that trigger then the coil energizes which uses up current so be aware of that you want to uh, wire things so you're not wasting more current than you have to but in case when it gets triggered, then it closes it. We'll see that the motor turns on. Now, before we get to that side of the switch, this is a 317 voltage regulator. It's adjustable, but if you connect the adjust pin directly to ground, you get 1.25 volts out of it. And uh, so the reason why was because this is only a three volt motor. And uh, if these uh, blades aren't pulled out right, then uh, this starts vibrating and the motor makes a grinding noise and stuff. And uh, so 1.25 volts, you don't have that problem even if these uh, slide all the way down. So let's get right to the demonstration there. And when I tried to use a single power supply to uh, power both the 555 timer and our fan here, then when the uh, output went low, things went wrong and uh, it kind of sputtered and stuff. So we're keeping the power supplies uh, separate so we get a steady 5 volts through the 555 timer. But there you can see output goes high and the fan turns on right there. The uh, relay uh, closes. So again the fan's only being powered at 1.25 volts whereas everything else is being powered at 5 volts. So the other side of the relay though is the normally closed position. So we'll just get that red one out of the way 
and bring the green one here. So I got the green one and the normal closed. The blue is in COM right there. So that's not the moving part of the relay. That's the common part. So now we'll plug it in when the output's high, if I can go quick enough. And you can see that the fan stays off. But when it goes low, now the fan turns on right there. So you can wire them however you want. But uh, main thing is that uh, for general electronics, the 555 timer, a stable mode is something you definitely want to learn. That's basic electronics. Knowing that helps you with a lot of electronics. The rest of this is stuff I piecemealed, uh, put together for this particular circuit. It's stuff I already had. I didn't buy anything new or whatnot. I tried to improvise only with what I had. So I'll probably make improved versions of this later on. But uh, for now, this was just a project I gave myself. And since people have been watching uh, the recent videos I've been making related to this, I just uh, kept going with it. If uh, it looked like people got bored, I would have uh, stopped sooner and uh, did something in the future with this. But uh, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting to the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.